Jesus was telling the disciples that he was going to send them the Holy Spirit. And now he wants to tell them the work the Holy Spirit will do. John 16, verse 1. These things I have spoken to you, that you may be kept from stumbling. They will make you outcasts from the synagogue. But an hour is coming for everyone who kills you to think that he's offering service to God. These things they will do because they have not known the Father or me. But these things I have spoken to you so that when that their hour comes, you may remember that I told you of them. These things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. But I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe me. And concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of mine, and he will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. The purpose of telling the disciples this is uh, so that when these things are happening, they're going to know it's because their persecutors don't know God. It's not their fault. Jesus is leaving them, and it would appear that they are getting the idea now because they're sorrowful. There's an advantage to Jesus leaving them. The helper, the Holy Spirit of truth, will be sent to them. This advantage will not be understood until the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes. In Acts 2, we see that Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, recalling the scripture readily and preaching boldly that Jesus is the promised Messiah. I, I, you know, I know a lot of people, they memorize the word, I've memorized the word myself. When I recall it, it's not because I'm so smart, I'm very good at memorizing things. It's because the Holy Spirit is recalling it for me. Otherwise, I'd be blind to what I'm saying. It would just be words. <clears throat> at this time, the disciples only see that Jesus is leaving, and they still don't understand the suffering that Jesus is going to do for us. They've given up asking where he's going. And what does Jesus say the benefit of receiving the Holy Spirit is? The first thing is he will convict the world, that's the whole world, of sin and righteousness and judgment. Those who don't believe in Jesus are lost in their sin. And yet the world looked at Jesus as though he was a sinner and that they themselves were righteous. That's why they had him crucified. They were so righteous. And Jesus knows he has no sin in him. And he said he's going back to him who sent him. He cannot ascend to the Father unless there's no sin in him. The Father cannot touch sin. He can't even look upon it. And we, he's looked upon sin through Jesus, the eyes of Jesus. And Jesus Christ has paid the penalty for it. And he's returning to the Father without sin. Ezekiel 18.4 says, The soul who sins will die. And in 2 Corinthians 5.21 it says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus proclaims that the ruler of this world, Satan, has been judged. Jesus is not yet resurrected from the dead, but by faith he's making this proclamation. It's as though he'd already finished what was about to take place on the cross. Jesus knows he won't fail. He's going to succeed because he trusts the Father and he loves the Father and he's going to do what the Father asks him to do. Revelations 1, 17 and 18. 
and this is Jesus speaking, he said, I am the first and the last, and the living one, and I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. The greatest power Satan has over us is death. I don't meet very many people that want to die. Um, even if you speak with people that are suicidal, they really don't want to die. They just want to get out of the situation they're in. And they think by killing themselves, they'll get out of that situation and maybe it'll be better uh, on the other side. Well, that's a deception of the devil. Because the only thing that's better is when you let Jesus Christ come into your life and he'll, you could be drowning. He'll pick you up just like he picked Peter up when Peter said, Lord, help me, when he was sinking. And he'll put you back on the water and walk you back to the boat. Jesus is out to save. He's not out to destroy. John 5, 22 said, For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son. So Jesus has conquered the devil through the death and resurrection of of himself. Jesus wants to say so many more things to the disciple, but they haven't got the Holy Spirit in them yet, and they're not going to be able to understand. They have to have this power that comes from God. When we ask Jesus to come into our life, we say, I'll follow you, the Holy Spirit comes in. But today I notice there's a lot of people uh, rejecting the greater power that is where uh, John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, but the one who is coming after me will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Jesus wants us to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, but there's people today say, well, I got the Holy Spirit when I got saved. That's all I need. Well, that's all you need for eternal salvation. There's no question about that. And that Holy Spirit's going to use you mightily. But I would uh, encourage each and every one of you to read uh, Acts chapter 2 and go through the book of Acts and see how the Holy Spirit was poured out upon people and they were uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit and the evidence that they were baptized in the Holy Spirit was they spoke in tongues. The Holy Spirit isn't going to be a Bible beater. The Holy Spirit's going to guide us, show us the direction we need to go, show us how to learn more of Jesus. He's going to guide us into all truth. How much truth will he guide you into? How much truth do you really want to know? There was a pillar of fire that guided Israel by night and a pillar of cloud that guided them by day. And Israel had to make the choice. Will I follow that pillar or not? They made the choice to follow it. Are you going to follow the Holy Spirit and be guided by him or not? Choose this day whom you will serve. The Holy Spirit discloses things to come. In 1 Timothy 4.1 it says, But the Spirit explicitly says that in later times some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. Why is this given to us who believe? I'm not going to fall away. But when I see people falling away, I'm not going to be shocked because the Holy Spirit's already revealed it to me. I know that's going to happen. I'll be discouraged. I'll be disappointed. But it's already been spoken. You know, a prophetic word isn't a word that makes something happen. A prophetic word like this is letting us know what will happen. And we're to be ready for that when that day comes. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. Any spirit that degrades Jesus is not of God. The Spirit has not come to bring a new covenant or to start a new kingdom. The Spirit has come to advance what Jesus has already started. The Spirit takes what belongs to Jesus and he reveals it to us. I want that fullness of the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. How about you?